Hey guys, it's Christina here. For those of you who don't know me, I am a naturopath, I'm a herbalist, I'm a GAPS practitioner, I'm a life coach, I'm all of those things, as well as being a mom and a wife and everything bundled into one and all of me. Um, so what I wanted to come and talk to you about today is learning about myself was full of lots and lots of bumps and dips and all of the things uh, along the way. And today I'm like fully reminded of that because, you know, today is my 18th wedding anniversary. Yesterday was my 19th engagement anniversary, but today is my 18th wedding anniversary. And, you know, I put on my, my personal Facebook page that we've been, we've been together 19 years and, and three weeks. We've been, we've been engaged for 19 years. We've been married for 18 years. We've been parents together for 17 years. Uh, we have seven children. Um, we've been homeschoolers for 12 years. We've like done all these things together as a husband and wife team that's been absolutely amazing. But I was reminded because I just thought, ah, oh, not everybody else is a fast decision maker like me. And I thought this is a perfect day to come and talk about this stuff. So uh, my husband has just walked into the room, so we'll see how this goes. Um, <laughs> so we have been married now 18 years, but when we got engaged, the day that I met Ben, I was like, you're marrying me. He was telling me about how he was going off to, he just gave me one of those smiles, how he was going off to New Zealand. He was going to go to this college and he was going to do all these things. And in my head, I was like, uh-uh. Um, that sounds all really nice, but actually you're marrying me. <laughs> and I knew from the day that I met him that we were getting married. It took him about three weeks to catch on. And, you know, it was, we then waited a year for his mother to cope with the fact that we were getting married and all of that type of stuff. You know, we were being very honoring at the time and we waited 12 months for her. We would have just got married straight away. And if it was up to me, we would have been married, you know, easily within a couple of months because it was already a yes for me. It wasn't ever a, um, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? It's like the answer is yes. And we'll just figure out how it works and what it's going to do and all the stuff. And so it's really interesting because I know other people's relationships have not been like that. And it was one of these things that, you know, over the last couple of years, I've been doing a lot of self-development work and getting to connect with myself and learning about how I, how I operate and, you know, all of this sort of stuff. And as I was learning about it, one of the things that I learned was that I am, if you know the DISC personality typings, um, so D, dominant, I, influencer, uh, S, stability, and C, um, compliant. Uh, my profile comes up with a high D energy and then an I energy. So both of those energy types are fast moving. They're, they're quick moving energy types. And for me, as that D energy, if, as long as the criteria match, we're good to go. Like I'm, I'm very fast at making those decisions. And, you know, as I was actually, you know, doing a lot of that development and I was learning about myself, it's me sitting back and going, oh, I can really see how that actually has played out in my life in a whole bunch of different ways. Like meeting my husband, knowing that I was going to marry him and just ready to get on with doing the thing as opposed to now we have to wait because it's appropriate to wait uh, and we have to be honoring and all of the things. Like if I had my time again, I'd be like, stop that. Just going to go through with it now because I know myself so much better now than I did then. Hi, Prue. Nice to see you here. Thanks for joining me. Uh, but the same thing happened, it happens to me all the time. Like I went in and I brought my brand new MacBook computer. First time in my life that I ever got the, the new computer. Usually it's my husband that gets the computer because he got it for study or he got it for something else and then I would get his hand-me-downs. And so my business was doing well enough that I went, no, I'm just going to go buy me the new computer. And I walked in and I, I'm sure the <laughs> <laughs> the service guy didn't know what was coming because he's used to people going in and asking all the questions. And I'm like, I've already looked. I know what I want. Uh, just tell me the answer between this and this. And he told me the answer. I'm like, good, great. Let's do that. Let's ring it up and let's go. <laughs> and he's used to people taking a long time because I could see he was like, what? You're just going to buy it? I'm like, yeah. Like, I'm just going to buy it. Can we just get this done? Uh, and, you know, 
he was slowing down the process and I'm like, oh my God, I've already said yes. I've already said yes. Let's get this, like, let's get this done. <laughs> Um, Prue's saying I'm such I'm such a slow decision maker, totally opposite. And that's all about learning who you are and being okay with it. Like, you know, there was a lot of shame for me like early on as a dominant feminine, you know, like as a dominant female. There's so many messages about sorry, flies in my room are annoying me. There's so many messages about who we're allowed to be and how we're allowed to be, especially as women. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty for men too, but I'm talking it from a woman's point of view because I'm a woman. Um, and I know that probably more than I would know men. Um, but I know that, you know, if you're, if you're dominant or if you make decisions or you're a fast mover, um, you get called all sorts of different names and, you know, we can recall from them. And I know that that's what I was doing. I know that in my life, I was actually pulling back from my energy and actually uh, slowing myself down to be nice for other people. Uh, but also so that, you know, I was seemingly not this B, B word that gets thrown around or the diva word that gets thrown around or any of those sorts of names that we get called when we know what we want and we go after what we want. Like we get called all sorts of different names. And so for me, I was like really recalling and, and pulling away from that. But actually it was really natural for me. And so there was this internal fight of fighting against what was acceptable in society versus what was actually within me. And, you know, for you, Prue, you just embrace. Like, that's okay. You're totally allowed to be a slower decision maker. You're allowed to do that and you're allowed to be that. And it's really just embracing who you are as opposed to trying to make yourself fit into the model of somebody else. And that's what I was doing. I was trying to fit into the model of somebody else. And the same as like, you know, we just brought a bed for my son and we walked into the shop. I'm like, which one do you want? He picked out a particular one. Um, the guy then said, actually, we don't have that one in stock. He showed us a different one. I said, do you like it? And he said, yes. And I'm like, right, we need a new mattress. He showed us to the mattresses. And I'm like, okay, great. Um, are you happy with this? Are you happy with this? To my husband and my son. And they're like, yes. <laughs> my son was definitely more yes. I'm like, great. So uh, we're going to say yes to this and this. Can you organize that for us? And my husband will pay. <laughs> and then I just went off and did some more looking at whatever else they had in the shop. And again, the serviceman was like, okay, so we're doing this. Yes, we're doing this. I've said yes. Now let's just make it happen. Because my yes is yes or my no is no. And I've been like that for a really long time. I just didn't know it. And so instead of actually going with my yeses and going with my nos, I was doing that whole people-pleasing thing of like, oh, okay, I'm going to do it like this so that it feels really good for you as opposed to going, my yes is yes and my no is no, which is why the day I met my husband, I knew we were getting married. It took him a little bit longer because he's a slower energy type. He's more the IS energy type, uh, which tends to be a little bit slower. And that's okay. It took him a little bit longer to realize, but it didn't take him that long to realize. Uh, and then we were a uh, yes for this. And it was the same when we had kids. I was like, I either want to have kids now or I want to have them then. He's like, oh, I'd rather have them sooner. I'm like, great, let's do this. Three months after we were married, we were pregnant. And then, you know, 11 months after that one, we were pregnant again. <laughs> and then 16 months after that one, we were pregnant again. And then, you know, I could keep going. <laughs> it slowed down a little bit because like we just, we just really went with what, you know, our bodies did. That's all it is. We, we used no birth control, we didn't avoid, we just let be what would be, and we were both really happy with that majority of the time. There were a couple of times where, you know, I was like, oh my God, I'm having another baby, and he was like, oh my God, we're having another baby. It's all worked out beautifully though. Like we've got these amazing children that have amazing sets of skills that are a delight to our life, and they are wonderful. And it gets to be okay, all of it. Um, Prue's saying, I get stuck, ooh, let me open that. I get stuck in the right or wrong type of thinking that one choice will be right and and so the others must be wrong, which I know is, is flawed. 
Oh, and I can relate to the people pleasing too. Absolutely. Like I think that I was maybe in that wrong or right stuff as well. But actually, once I actually really let go and just went, actually, I'm just going to trust that the divine has got me. That if I make a wrong decision here, the door will be closed. It will shut, be shut down. It will stop. It will be moved on. Something will happen that will stop me from going there. And I, I give my power to that. Like I, you know, I just trust that the universe is for me and not against me. And I say, I'm saying universe here, you can say God, you can say whatever you like. For me, it's really God, but um, sometimes people are more acceptable with the universe. So um, I just gave it over to that, yes, this is fully in alignment with me. There's going to be some hard stuff, but I know that that is going to be good for me overall, that it's going to provide good things for me overall. Um, just like today I signed up to have coaching with somebody like I'm doing a, a I'm doing a session with somebody on some of my own stuff because like right now both my parents have passed away so technically I'm an orphan like it feels you know part of me feels weird saying that because you know I'm I'm an adult and that's what happens when you're an adult but I'm actually quite young for majority of people who lose their parents now and just embracing with that that part of me that is feeling into being an orphan and what that means for me and you know where I move to from this and I know that there's going to be some hard stuff that comes up in that session I know I'm going to have to face some th feelings and some things that I don't necessarily love doing like you know I'm, I'm very much like get it together Christina <laughs> type of person like I'll go I'll, I'll get it together off camera and then I'll come on when I'm on when I'm you know have got it together and I know that there's going to be some challenges in this but I know that the challenges that are going to come up in this are going to be good for me that they're going to actually lead me more into you know connecting with myself loving myself even more embracing more of who I am as opposed to fighting and resisting who I am and I think that that's one of the things that I, I as a coach and as a practitioner see quite a lot with some of my own clients is that They've spent a lot of time learning to resist who they are. They've spent a lot of time, many decades for lots of them, in actually suppressing the parts of themselves that aren't pleasing for the people around them. And I'm thinking of a beautiful client right now who um, was my husband. He's just left the door open. It's 18 years of marriage. That's what happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm thinking of a beautiful client right now that had her whole life was surrounded by people who were telling her who she was allowed to be. And she didn't know then who she was allowed to be because one person would have this aspect, you have to be like this, and another person would have, no, you have to be like this. And so she was consistently going back and through, like she couldn't make decisions for herself because she didn't know who she was. And so her yes couldn't be yes and her no couldn't be no because part of her was saying yes and part of her was saying no because it was clashing against the conditioning that she'd been given. And so that for me has been one of the amazing parts of actually learning who I am, who Christina is and how Christina operates and actually giving myself the freedom to go, actually, my yes is my yes. I'm a solid yes on a lot of things. I'm also a solid no on a lot of things. And then I'm okay with sitting with, I'm not sure yet, about a whole bunch of things too. But knowing that I get to make those choices, that they get to be in alignment with me and that I don't have to just do it because I'm pleasing other people. And, you know, I get to heal my wounds and I get to heal things that have happened in the past. And all of that creates this beautiful experience of what we call life. And connecting in with that and that's what I feel like I see with a lot of my clients especially this week I've had um well this previous week now I I was I've got a, a bunch of new people who have just been asking me questions because they're thinking about working with me and they're just like oh, which way is the way that's going to work best for me with you and as we were plugging away in that I had a lady who came with some chronic fatigue and as I was talking to her about chronic fatigue, what I was saying was, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that I see when somebody has got chronic fatigue. This is a generalization, but this is 
generally some of the stuff that I see might be going on for them. One, definitely there's some stuff going on from a physical level. You know, we need to support the body from a physical level, eating the right foods that are going to help you get lots of energy, eating the foods that are going to nourish and support you really, really well. But even more than that, some of the things that I see, especially when it comes to either chronic fatigue, depression, anxiety, is that you've spent a lot of your life training to be the person that you currently are right now. Not training to be you, but training to play the roles that you've been led to believe you have to play, being conditioned to think the way that you feel that you have to think. You've spent a lot of time training to suppress the parts of yourself that we sometimes think is not appropriate for other people. Or we've been told, don't be too noisy, don't talk too much, don't be playful, settle down, stop being silly. Um, all of those types of messages that we get and we've learned, you know, for many decades we've been training to be somebody else. And when we play a character, it gets exhausting. I've got a Bachelor of Performing Arts. When we did theatre, when we did like a show for our, you know, we put on a stage, stage show, we did a, a film or a video or any of those types of things, you would only do it for a short period of time. Like the whole play doesn't usually go longer for two hours, longer than two hours. But even in rehearsals, we would only rehearse for a period of time. We'd do warm ups, we'd do, you know, costumes, we'd do lighting, we'd do sound, we'd do staging, but we actually wouldn't play the character for more than a couple of hours at a time because it was exhausting. It's draining to play a character. It's draining to be somebody else. But yet, in our lives, we have been trained and conditioned and um, socially conformed to play the characters of who we are. And what we've forgotten is the person of actually, who's the, who's the person playing the character? We've forgotten that person quite, quite a lot. And it's exhausting to always have to wear a mask. It's exhausting to wear it in your relationships, in your friendships, at school, at home, like when you're sleeping even because you're dreaming these things. It's exhausting and no wonder people are feeling depressed, feeling anxious because if you're wearing a mask at any time, your mask could fall off. That's creating anxiety. And it's not like don't overgeneralize what I'm saying here. It's not the only reason why you might have anxiety. But if you're wearing a mask, that's one of the reasons that you can have anxiety. The same with depression. Like if that mask falls off, people are going to see me and they're not going to like who I, who they see. They're, they're going to shame who they see. The person that is behind the mask is not good, not worthy, not lovable, not any of those things that we've been told that we need to, like the character plays so that we can get some of that. And if you're playing a role and you're wearing a mask and you're constantly having to make sure that you've got your mask on right, you're going to end up with fatigue. That's just what's going to happen. And so when I'm working with those clients, I'm going, where in your life have you been told you're not allowed to be who you are? Where in your life are you wearing a mask and what's the mask? What parts of you have been left behind because you're wearing that mask? What parts of you have been shut down, suppressed, depressed because you can't be who you fully are? You've been told you're not allowed to embody who you fully are. And that's where I see people getting the most progress. We absolutely have to do the dietary work. We do the herbs, we do the diet, we do those types of things. But we have to do the spiritual and the emotional work of connecting back with who actually are you? How do you operate? What are the stories? What's the baggage that has been suppressing you, keeping you tied down, keeping you stuck, thinking that you can't have these things or you're not that type of person or you're not allowed to access or you're not allowed to behave in this sort of way because of that journey of you being suppressed and conditioned your whole life. That's what needs to actually be changed. And then the diet work and the herbs, they work beautifully after that. 
they do exactly what they're meant to do and it becomes easy to do the dietary repair because you've fixed the problems and you've actually started to embrace who you actually are and be okay with that and to love that person and to fall in love with the amazing gifts that you've been given and start walking them out and start sharing them around and start doing amazing things in the world with those gifts as opposed to suppressing and shutting and hiding yourself away. You get to move into all of those and you get to embrace all of those. And the story that comes up for me often when I'm thinking about this sort of stuff is the story of the elephant. That with baby elephants, one of the ways that they train them is they tie them to a stake. Like they tie one of their legs to the stake. And the baby elephant learns very quickly that they can't get off that stake. They chain them, they chain them so they can't get off of it. And they fight it and they resist it for a period of time, but then they give up and they stop resisting it and they stop fighting it. And then the handler doesn't have to have the chain anymore. They can just use a rope and they can just put any old stake in the ground. And the elephant doesn't get off of that because the elephant has learnt that it couldn't get off the stake the first time. It couldn't get off the chain. It couldn't do that. But now the elephant's grown. Now the elephant is a big, bold elephant that has the ability to pull trees over and knock down trees. And, you know, the tiny little stake is not keeping the elephant there. What's keeping the elephant there is the memory of when it couldn't get off the stake, of when it couldn't get off the chain. And what happens and what I see happening in society is that there are some elephants that are breaking free and those elephants are just like kicking off that stake. They're lifting their leg up. They're walking away from those chains. They're breaking them. They're thrashing them. They're punching through them. They're getting off those stakes. But the elephants that are still staying on their stakes, instead of going, how did you get off the stake? They're sitting there going, you should not get off your stake. There is something wrong with you because you're off your stake. Get back on your stake. And that's where we see some of the people in our lives continuing to try and pull us back down because they're still living in the conditioning that they've been brought up with. And if you start walking off that stake, it upsets them. It frustrates them. They can't see how you can do that some of which is because they haven't asked and some of it is because they're still stuck in the conditioning of the stake and it's normal for them to get frustrated with you but if nobody decides that they're not going to be stuck on the stake if nobody picks up their leg and just starts walking nobody else is going to see that they can get off that stake and you doing the work to connect to you and to sort out all of the stories and all the baggage and all the conditioning that you've been led to believe is you, that you have to live that way forever and a day. You doing that stuff and actually changing it and sifting through it and deciding who you're going to be and how you want to create your life and what you're going to be a yes for and what you're going to be a no for. You doing that shows other people how to get off their own stakes and leads them into the journey of becoming more of themselves. And so when you start that journey and that gift of embracing the hard, facing the things that are scary for you, facing the challenges that are coming your way, when you start walking that journey, you also give permission to the people around you to also start walking that journey. And so it starts with this gift that we give ourselves. It starts with this, you know, investment that we put into our own lives to face the things that might be scary for us, to decide that we're going to embrace all of us, to actually start to connect with who that little person was when they were born into the world. It starts with that, but it ends with, giving permission to the people around us to also love themselves and to also walk into their destiny and walk into who they've been designed to be and embrace all of who they're allowed to be in their life. 
they get to do that. They get to embrace that because you did. And so today on my 18th wedding anniversary, I want to encourage you, start walking the journey on getting to know who you are. Start sifting through the conditioning that you've been receiving, challenging the social norms that have been passed down from generation to generation, some of which very much no longer serve us. Start sifting through them, looking at them for what they were and deciding, is this who I want to be? Is this how I want to do it? And you have to embrace play. You have to embrace it's okay to get it wrong. It's okay to buy a dress that you don't like and realize actually that style doesn't suit me. It's okay to try something new and then go, well, that was interesting. I didn't like it. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> it's okay because all you've done then is you've actually found one thing that's not for you and you go find something else and you dance with that and you play with that and you engage with that. And then, you know, you might find something that you didn't know that you loved. You might also find another thing that you don't love. But it's all along the journey where you get to find and connect with you and embrace the parts of you that maybe have been suppressed and shut down along the way that you get to get closer to you. So I'm going to invite you, of course, if you want to do more of this work with me, you can totally book in and have private sessions and we just do this stuff one to one. Or you can come and join me for Divinely Nourished, where we're going to talk about it particularly from a nourishing point of view, nourishing our heart, nourishing our mind, nourishing our soul, and start to challenge some of those norms that we've been given. Or you can do it in a completely different way. You can just pick up a journal and you can start writing in it. Whatever works for you, do that. Whatever you do, start embracing who you are. Start embracing what you're allowed to have in your life. And remember, you get to be the elephant that breaks off the stake that then gives permission to everybody else to do the same. All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. So much love to you all. Thank you for being here with me. Much love and many blessings. Catch you next time. Bye for now.